put that up there. Let me get this on. Yeah, I hope it's not too heavy. You look good. Let me get this out of your way. We love you, Coach. Thank Thanks you. for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love that introduction. It's a type I could listen to all day. And <laughs> like you, I thought I was going to have to. I think I... <laughs> As King Henry VIII said to his third wife, ain't going to keep you long. <laughs> and I'm not going to keep you long here, but I just want to share thoughts and ideas. I'm not going to preach to you. And I'm not going to lecture. He told you who I am. Let me tell you who I'm not. I'm, I'm not a... I'm not an actor, I'm not a magician, I, I'm just a simple individual who graduated in the lower third of my high school class. Now, if it wasn't for people like me, there could have been no upper half of the class. So I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just a simple individual that wants to share thoughts and ideas. And there are a lot of things in this world I don't understand. I don't understand how a black cow eats green grass, produces white milk and yellow cheese. I don't understand why you buy hot dogs in packages of eight and hot dogs in package, buns in packages of six. That, that makes no sense. I don't understand why somebody goes into a pharmacy, a sick person goes all the way to the back to get medicine, healthy person buys cigarettes at the door. No, no sense. <laughs> and I really don't understand why a kamikaze pilot wore a helmet. You know, I keep saying, <laughs> why? But I really don't understand why anybody with common sense would not have a strong faith in Jesus Christ, in God. I want to tell you the most important thing, count your blessings. You were able to go to a great Catholic university, be able to express your faith, be able to go to mass four times a day during the COVID, two times a day when it wasn't. <laughs> Just how fortunate. Don't take that for granted. You know, everything you believe when you came to college was because of what your parents believe. And now, you're getting ready to leave this world. You're going to formulate your own thoughts, but I want to tell you this. There's no way in this world you can love your parents half as much as they love you. You won't understand that till you have children of your own where you gladly lay down your life for your child. But the child won't always do that for the parents. So count your blessing. You know, we all have foxhole religion. I can't begin to tell you how many times I prayed when Michigan had the ball on our three-yard line. Oh, God, you stop them. I'll go to church. I'll change my life. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times I say, God, I have no doubt that you separated the seeds for the Israelites to leave. I have no doubt for 40 years you fed them in the desert. And I have no doubt you took water and changed it into wine. And I still have no doubt whatsoever you fed thousands with fishes and loaves. But God, I can't trust you with Michigan because you don't know how good they are. <laughs> oh, I believe this, but we've got to put our faith and our belief in it. Now, I'm going to make five assumptions of the people here in the audience. And if you happen to come here to listen to Lou Holtz, you wasted your time because I want to talk to these young men and women. And I, I want to say this to you sincerely. I'm going to make five assumptions about you. <clears throat> I'm going to assume you want to be even more successful professionally. I'm going to assume you want to have a good personal life. Now I'm going to assume you want to feel needed. Now I'm also going to make the assumption you want to feel secure about your future. And the last assumption I make is that you want to go to heaven. See, ladies and gentlemen, we complicate life and we don't have to. Do you realize there are only seven colors of the rainbow? Look what Michelangelo did with seven colors of the rainbow. There's only seven musical notes. Look what Beethoven did with seven musical notes. There's only ten numbers. Look what, Be look what my Bernie Madoff did with ten numbers. So <laughs> it doesn't mean it's always good, but it doesn't have to be complicated. <laughs> and you need four things in your life. If you don't have four things in your life, you're going to fill a tremendous void. Everybody needs someone to love. Everybody needs something to do. Everybody needs someone to believe in. And in my case, it's Jesus Christ. And everybody needs something to hope for. Don't make the mistake I made. I did a lot of dumb things. But the dumbest thing I did, I went to Notre Dame. We took a program on the bottom. We took it to the very top. 
For nine straight years, we went to a January one bowl, the sugar, the cotton, the orange, or the fiesta. Nobody's done it before, nobody's done it since. We took it on top and we maintained it. We finished second as a country at Notre Dame and everybody called me an idiot. An idiot finished second. Guy finishes last in medical school, they call him doctor. And <laughs> just doesn't seem fair. Doesn't. So you get to the point, you say, this is pretty good. Let's not maintain it. Let's not change it. Let's maintain. And anytime you maintain any phase of your life, ladies and gentlemen, you're dying. The tree's either growing or it's dying. So is grass. So is a marriage. So is a Doesn't have thing to do with age. Has everything to do, am I trying to achieve something? And achieve, try to achieve and improve your religious life as well as your personal life and your professional life. I can't begin to tell you how important it is to have goals. I never had any goals growing up. My dad had a third grade education. I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was born in a cellar by Dr. McGraw. We had one bedroom for my sister, myself, and my parents. We had a kitchen, a half bath. A half bath did not have a tub, a shower, or a sink. We lived there for seven and a half years. There was no welfare. There was no food stamps. There was no safety nest then. But the reason I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, I was born in this country, and I was taught by my parents. If I had a strong faith in Jesus Christ and made good choices, how fortunate I was. That's why I was born with a silver spoon, not because of what we had, but because of what I was taught. And I can't begin to tell you, don't underestimate yourself. I want to talk to you about things I wished I knew when I was 21. Now, I've been 21. You've never been 84, so I'd pay attention to what I'm going to say. <laughs> but it's a, how blessed we are in so many different respects. But trust yourself. You all have great talent. I never had great confidence, and you should. When I was in the first grade, Sister Mary Baptista says, what do you want to be? I want to be a lawyer, a doctor, a fireman. I want to be a garbage collector. <laughs> she said, that's weird. I said, but they only work on Tuesdays. <laughs> so that's, that, that's the way I thought then. Now, life is nothing more than making good choices. Now. I just asked you to open your mind and open your heart to what I'm about to say. Wherever you are going to be because of the choice you make, the spouse you live with, the choices you make. You choose to do drugs, drop out of school, join a gang, have tattoos from head to bottom. You choose to have difficulty in life and stop blaming somebody else. It's all about the choices you make. Now, how can I make sure I make good choices? I learned this when I was practically 32 years of age. You only have to follow three rules. All your life. No, no four, just three simple rules. The three simple rules is rule number one, do what's right. There's never a right time to do the wrong thing. Never a wrong time to do the right thing. You have any doubt, get out the Bible. If you can't find the Bible, try to follow the Ten Commandments. Just do the right thing. I think it's right to be honest. Right to be on time. Right to be loyal. I think it's wrong to practice sexism, racism, spousal abuse. You just do what you know in your heart is right and proper. God will tell you what it is. And, and when you do that, your self-image goes up. Rule number two, do everything to the very best of your ability. Not everybody may be All-American, not everybody may be first team. But everybody can be the best you're capable of being. And being totally committed to excellence means that you live that way. God did not put us on this earth in order to be average. He gave us talent and ability. He wants us to be the very best that we can be. If, if you want to fail, you have the right to fail. You do not have the right to cause other people to fail because you don't do everything to the very best of your ability. As an officer in the Army, I served after Korea War and before Vietnam. And I've traveled to 13 countries visiting with the troops. I appreciate the sacrifice they made, being away from their families for months at a time, not being there to celebrate their birthdays, et cetera. When I was in Afghanistan, I had to wear a 30-pound flak jacket, a helmet, expert rifleman with me every time. And we flew by Black Hawk helicopter. I got home, my wife said, were you ever scared? I said, not till I landed in Chicago. That's the first time I... <laughs> but it's just, 
And what I learned in the Army, if you want to fail, you have the right to fail. You do not have the right to cause other people to fail because you don't do everything to the very best of your ability. When you join a wife or a spouse, you bring a child to the world, you join a business, you join an organization, you have obligations and you have responsibilities. You have to adhere to them. You want to fail as an individual, fine. But you don't have the right to cause your teammates to fail because you don't live up to the obligation. And let's remember that the total commitment to excellence is essential. And the third rule is simple. Show people you care. You're never again going to meet somebody that doesn't need a smile, a kind word, and encouragement. I mentioned I'm an old man, but the one thing I've learned in all my time on this earth, you're never going to be worry-free. You're always going to have problems. You're always going to have difficulties. You're going to have obstacles. That's part of life. But you learn how to handle them. You learn how to cope with them. You learn how to make good choices. But caring about people, if you put love in an organization, which obviously you have in this wonderful university, you have love here, and that makes it special. Create the love in the family, in the church. Too many people, and particularly young people, worry about themselves instead of worrying about other people. My wife of 59 years passed away last June 30th at 4.45 in the afternoon. Now, I don't pray for her anymore. I pray to her. And if she ain't in heaven, I ain't even going to try because I have no <laughs> chance with her. But she had cancer stage four for 22 years. And she's a very private person, never did an interview except one time. She did one interview because it had to do with cancer. And the individual said to Ms. Holtz, Ms. Holtz, what did you learn from having cancer? She said, I learned how much my family loved me. Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't love her anymore. We showed it. Why do we have to wait for somebody to have a catastrophe before we let them know how important they are? When my wife passed away, I received thousands of text messages and emails telling me all the great things she had done. And I said, why didn't you say that when she was still alive? Don't pass up the opportunity to let people know you genuinely care about them. And my wife always says, well, how can you talk about caring about people with a bumper sticker on your car? And I'm sorry, doctor, if I offend you, but it's a true story. She didn't like my bumper sticker. We go to 8 o'clock mass every Sunday. She'd make me park in the back of the lot and back the car in so people couldn't see it. <laughs> the bumper sticker said, Jesus loves you. Everybody else thinks you're an asshole. <laughs> I thought it was funny. She thought it was bad. But, <laughs> but just, you know, I could talk for an hour on every one of those three rules. Just do the right thing. Do the best you can. Show people you care. And why is that important? Because there's three questions that everybody's going to ask you the rest of your life, the same three questions you ask of everybody else. First question you ask is, can I trust you? Without trust, you can have a relationship. You have to be able to trust one another. Now, the only way I know for sure you can trust one another is when both sides does the right thing. Why is it important to do the right thing? So you build trust. The second question everybody wants to know, are you committed to excellence? You have all the slogans you want. First will be best, then will be first. You send a message whether you're committed to excellence by the standard you have. And the only way you can answer the question, are you committed to excellence? To do everything to the very best of your ability. And the last question everybody wants to know, do you care about me? Do you care about me, can I run a throat, or do you genuinely care about me? And if you do those three things, you'll build trust, You'll build a commitment to excellence. You'll build a love. And I promise you, that will never let you down. As I get ready to sit down here, I want to do a simple little magic trick for you. Now, just like any other newspaper, you have front page for people who want to read the news. You have the comics for people who can't read. <laughs> and we always have the editorial page for people can't think. But <laughs> if, if you would just take two people, take somebody you love, admire, and respect, 
take somebody you've got a serious problem with. I'm having major surgery on my back on Wednesday. I maybe should have had it done last Wednesday, but <laughs> in any event, take somebody you love, admire, and respect, and somebody you've got a problem with. Put these three questions on both people. Can you trust them? Yes or no? Are they committed to excellence? Yes or no? Do they care about you? I used to do this with a phone book when I was younger. <laughs> they care about you and the organization, yes or no? I guarantee you, the person you love, admire, and respect, you just said yes to all three questions. The person you got a problem with, you pinpointed the problem. Either you can't trust them, they aren't committed, or they don't care. It's that simple, and there isn't any such thing as magic <laughs> in what you do. Now, so I, I got my battle. Oh. Somebody. Somebody. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry my balance is so bad, but uh, people said, how'd you do that? Perfectly, I thought. But in any event, it didn't important. <laughs> but what you say to somebody is very important. But what you say is not near as important is your tone of voice. Your tone of voice, not near as important, is your facial expression. I'd be a better coach today than I've ever been before, because when somebody fouled up, instead of hollering and yelling, I'd put my arm around them, and I use three words of profanity, hell, ass, and damn, they're all in the Bible. <laughs> I would put my arm around and say, Jim, that was a dumbass thing to do. And you have no idea how mad I am, but you're gonna find out. Don't lower the standard for your children or anybody else. But also, speak softly, smile a lot, but don't lower the standards. When I stood up here, I knew 10% of you wouldn't remember 10% of what I said 10 minutes after I said it. But for the last 19 minutes, you give me your most positive attention. I genuinely appreciate it. I don't want to preach to you, lecture to you. But the things I told you are from my heart. There's a statue of it at Notre Dame. I guess they need a place for the pigeons to land. I don't know. <laughs> but if you look at the statue, the, there's three words on it. Trust, commitment, and love. I didn't put them there, but the Notre Dame and the players put them there because that's what we believe. Those are our core values. Those are the things, the culture, that we want to have in our family. My greatest accomplishment by far is my family. And I don't care what you accomplish in life. If you fail as a member of a family, you fail. Yes, I was fortunate enough to receive the Medal of Freedom, the highest honor that you could receive. But that doesn't define who I am. My children will define who I am. And life's not determined by the number of breaths you take, but it's determined by the number of breathtaking moments you have. And that was certainly one of them. And I just was sorry that my wife had passed away four months before I received it. Doctor, thank you so much for having me. And faculty, can't thank you enough. You're the ones that make a difference in these people and the wonderful job you've done for the last four years. Now I close with this. Do you want to be happy for an hour? Eat a steak. Do you want to be happy for a day? Play golf. Do you want to be happy for a week? Go on a cruise. Now to me, going on a cruise is like being in jail, except you have a chance to drown, but that's what you want to do. Do you want to be happy for a month? Buy a new car. Want to be happy for a year, win the lottery. Want to be happy for a lifetime. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and follow those three rules. Thank you for having me. <laughs>